Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, and this is The Ramble, and we go from, uh, till midnight, from the city you see below you, New York City. Albert Reynoso is with us, ladies and gentlemen. Albert Reynoso, better known as Alex Bennett's former producer. Don't you have that? Other people's former producers, Do yes. you have a Wikipedia page at all? No, no, no. Okay. I'm not a social media person. Well, no, but people can write a Albert Reynoso. It might be up there. You never looked. No, I don't think so. It could be. I'm a non-entity. I'm not. I'm You're not part a, of the support crew, are you? That's it. I merely provide opportunity. That's been my my object in life. Yeah. So you watching anything good on TV? Uh, yes, I just finished uh, recently the uh, latest series of Fargo. Great, which was excellent. John Hamm, how good is he? Yeah. All of the, the whole cast was great. Oh, she's oh. terrific. You know, she's yeah. the daughter of uh, what's her name? If I know her last, Juno Temple. Juno Temple. Yeah, uh, 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 Jul- excellent. Uh, Julian Temple, the director. Oh, that's his daughter. Up. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love that show. I, I was, I would, I was happy when it was through because things like we know it's Fargo will come back with yeah. an, another story, but I was happy it was over because it had a completion. All right, and then, uh, and, and that was good. You know, they and all do all their episodes, all their all their stuff. They, it's what they call it. They, 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 what do they call it? Uh, Episodic. It, Ep, no, no it, there's oh. a term for it where it's a different story every series. Okay. I don't know the term. Yeah. But anyway, it's a good show. A really good show. I'll tell you what we watched. Marjorie and I watched the beginning of The Bear. Okay. Oh, I've seen the whole bear. And the first episode, if Marjorie has this attitude, if she doesn't like it in the first five minutes, you know, that's it. That's a bad. That's really a bad way to do it. Oh, of course, especially with a series because the first one yeah. is kind of the pilot, you know. And anyway, uh, she wouldn't go watch it again. I kept saying, "Everybody's saying, with it? everybody's saying what a great show this is." I said, "We really should give it more of a chance. Watch the second episode, maybe a third. Let it get up to speed." And she went, I'm not watching that. I am not watching that. And then wins all these awards. And I go, you know, it's winning all these awards. I'm not watching that. I'm. She gets very stubborn about this. So very finally foolish. I said to her, come on, let's give a second episode a chance. She says, okay, only because I want to be able to do something with you. Okay. So, okay. So we watched the second episode. She says, well, let's look at a third. By the time we're through, I mean, those are short episodes. They're like 30 yeah, minutes yeah. each. We've gone through the whole season in about four hours. Yep. And she goes, well, I wonder what's going to happen in the next season. And by the time it's over, she went, that was terrific. So you watch both seasons. Yeah. And it's of ex- course, it is terrific. It's excellent. Yeah. All the, act- all the actors are tremendous. Yeah. You care about the characters. The story is really a nothing thing. It's just a way to keep great characters together. Yeah. It's it's a fine show. And it's a lot about dysfunction and uh you know, it it's just a very good show. And it's not only about dysfunction, it's about function as well. Oh yeah, about dysfunctional people getting together and functioning. Yeah, yeah. You know, and meeting potential they never knew they had. Yes. And it's a, it's just a great show. Mm-hmm. So we were watching that, and we were watching Ted. I the, love Ted. The series. Have you seen it? Oh, wait, wait a minute. Ted? Ted? Ted Lasso? No. I hate Ted Lasso. Can't oh, I love it. Ted Lasso. That's but, another great series. But and, anyway, that has, and that has Juno Temple Juno in Temple's it. Juno Temple's in it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But anyway, 
No, Ted, the, te the teddy bear. The teddy bear? Yeah. yeah. You didn't like that picture? No, oh, no, come on. What's no. funnier than a teddy bear who swears? Come on. I don't like nasty things. I don't like nasty humor. Well, anyway, they did I Ted the really series. McFarland did Ted the series. Seven episodes on Peacock. And uh, I got to tell you, except for a couple of the episodes, which I didn't like. Very funny. Very funny. Hilarious. I'll take your word for it. You know, Seth MacFarlane, hilarious. I don't really, I'm not a Seth, a Seth MacFarlane guy. I don't really think he's that great. Really? That's just me. Also, Adam Sandler. Never never got a Adam Sandler. I never Sorry. got Adam Sandler, but I, I, I've had him on my show. I had him on my show in San Francisco. And a very nice guy. You know, so sure, my, yeah. my feeling about him is tempered by the fact that I liked him. You know? I, I, I understand why people like him and he's not a horrible, but I don't, I just don't see anything there. I just don't see it. I agree with you. I, I, agree I think, with you. I think Seth MacFarlane has far more talent, but I just don't like Seth. I'll, Seth I'll tell you, a lot of those humor. people who came out of Saturday night live aren't really that great. I agree with you, you there know, too. Tina, Tina Fey is an exception. Mm -hmm. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Well, I never was crazy about Eddie Murphy. You know, I always thought of him as the poor man's uh, Richard Pryor. Mm, no, I, I think he's. I think he's got a, a, a lot of talent. Yeah, Murphy. but you know, I, I, I don't understand Will Ferrell. I never really understood Will Ferrell either. Yeah, he's. Not, I, I wouldn't go out and watch a, a Will Ferrell movie, but if it's on. I'll, I'll, my wife loves Elf. Gotta watch Elf constantly. Elf, Elf, you know, Elf, Elf, Elf is a, is I don't, a, I don't get a, it to me. Elf is a very good movie. Yeah. I mean, what's okay. funnier than a giant human sized Elf? I don't really think that's all that funny. Yeah, well, I thought it was pretty good. You know, and, I mean, and, if I had to say a good Will Ferrell movie, you know. Okay. I think Anchorman, Anchorman, Anchorman. A Anchorman, he did Anchorman, right? Yeah, yeah. Anchorman was pretty good. I, I, I liked Anchorman. Well, now that I think about it, maybe Will Ferrell's okay. <laughs> you know? He's okay, but he's there's nothing, nothing special. Nothing special. Nothing, uh, do you, I don't do see you, the big deal. Do you think he's, that as a society we have lowered our standards as far as what we think is good when it comes to entertainment? Um, no, I don't. And, 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 uh, the bear is, is one of the reasons I don't because there's plenty of great entertainment out there. Plenty of it. Fargo and the bear and, and, and just tons of other stuff. But I think that there is so much available to us that there's a lot of crap out there too, that there didn't used to be a lot of crap. Now there's a lot of crap out there. Well, and what we have is we have an outlet for more crap than we used to have an outlet yeah. for more crap. Any outlets for more. Everybody can have their own outlet for, for more crap. And here we are. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, we, we, you think about it. Uh, just think about the streaming. How much it's added to the places where we get our entertainment. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's huge. It used to be, when I was a kid, there were four networks. That was it. And by the way, when I was a kid, when we four. got our first television set, TV didn't go on till four in the afternoon. What four networks did you have as a kid? Well, you had NBC. Well, actually, you had more than that. We had, well, was PBS around by then? No, maybe not. PBS was, I think, in the 60s it started. Maybe. Okay, forget it. But there still were four. You what know, were they? Well, there was NBC, CBS, ABC, and? And the Blue Network. No. That was back in radio. <laughs> Dumont. Oh, Dumont. Yeah, I, I yeah, don't There was don't a, a full-fledged Dumont television network. That's where Jackie Gleason started. Oh, okay. It was a thing called uh, a Shower of Stars or something, a Cavalcade of Stars. Mm -hmm. And and he was, the, uh, he was the, the show every week on it. And that's where they first did The Honeymooners. Oh, okay. But not with, uh, what's her name? Not with... Uh, 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 Where's Randolph? No, no, no. Who played? Who played? That was Trixie. Who played uh, the wife? Uh, I forgot her. Audrey. Name. 
Audrey something. Yes. Uh, yeah, right. Anyway, originally, the original Alice was Pert Kelton, who was a really well, great comedic actress. And she played a real shrew of a woman. Okay, it wasn't this loving relationship between the two of them. Shut up, Ralph! You know, that kind of thing. And it really uh -huh. was funnier than the one with Audrey, whatever her name is. Why was she replaced? Uh, because uh, I think when they went to CBS, he wanted to uh, have somebody who was maybe a little softer in tone more likeable, a little to more go likeable. against his not softness, you know. Mm -hmm. That's the reason they see. I see this is what old people can teach you that that Pert Kelton was the original Alice, but I don't know that I uh signed up for this class. That's the that's the problem. You yeah. maybe teach it to me, but you didn't sign up for what this class. Oh, <laughs> oh, you're not the professor I wanted. Well, I was going to give you credit for it. Oh, okay, I'll take the credit. Yeah, you had something else you aren't you to auditing do. this class? I apparently I am. <laughs> yeah. What did you do for Alex Bennett? I audited him. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, so are, are you looking at the politics these days? Uh, uh, well, if I'm I'm not looking at it, but it kind of hits you in the face wherever you go. There's no choice. Yeah. Even even in the few small news related feeds that I read. And much of it is scientific. It always bleeds in. There's always some politics bleeding in. So, well, you know, the thing that's interesting for both of us is when we see um, Iowa and New Hampshire come up, right? Because we went to Iowa and we went to New Hampshire, right? Among among the first live broadcasts for for both of those events. I was told that. Yeah. Um, uh, and we did a live broadcast from one of the places where they were caucusing. From Iowa, right? Yeah, were we doing a live broadcast or just recording it? I can't remember. Well, I think I think we were recording it, but we were the first we were the first broadcasters allowed into the system, into a caucus, to to record what it was like and speak I, to the. I people. didn't know that. How did we accomplish that? Um, did you you, you and your? I had nothing to do with it. You had no, not part of your skill set, huh? Not part of no. Well, I wasn't given the. I wasn't given the. Uh, Somebody else, uh, I, I imagine, a, a number of people arranged it, yeah, and 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 then sent us to to record. And it. I think we found it. How can I put it? Endearing. There's something very simple and American, and yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, grassroots uh, politics in the yeah. whole process. But I don't think it means much. No, you know what it always remind me of. Do you remember that uh, that short story, The Lottery, where the people the people uh, have a lottery, and at the end of the lottery, instead of getting a, a, a nice prize, they stone the person to death who wins the lottery. It kind of reminded me of that. Kind of a creepy kind of electoral system. It was just just well, little, it, it's just the weird. whole the whole nature of it. You know, usually you go into a, a voting booth, you pull a lever, and then you leave. Right, right. Here, there was this whole process of yeah. getting this line if you're for so and so, and getting this line if you're for so and so. Now, if you want to, then somebody comes around, and tries to convince people to come over right. to their line. That's the thing. The changing of the mind thing was a little strange to me. Well. They, they ins there's electioneering right there where you're going to make your vote, yeah. which I grew up and, and lived most of my life in New York. There's no electioneering anywhere near the ballot box. Well, first of all, part uh, of the process here, is part of the process was is that when you these people lined up, if there weren't enough people for one candidate, that line was gone. Right. That and then that line gone. had to find other lines to go into. Right, and then the, the the by process of elimination, other lines would be eliminated as well. But right. in the meantime, there are people running around into all these lines trying to convince people to come over to their candidate. candidate. Yeah, it it's very strange. 
That's and by the way, the, that it, was the strange part to me is changing people's minds on the and, spot. And whoever wins the Iowa caucus walks away going, "I won the Iowa caucus. Look at me. I'm going to be the next candidate for president." Of the, and I'm going, you know, this doesn't mean anything, right? It's just another primary. It's not even a primary. It's a caucus. Yeah, but but the outcome is is the same as just another primary. Whoever wins that, they bring all the winners together and find out who has it's, the most. It's kind of like American Idol or something like that. So kind of like... Uh, uh, really, everything is kind of like American Idol. Yeah, you know, they, contemporary... I, I, I said this the other day. Contemporary life is uh, strictly um, a matter of being judged and getting immunity. That's what it's boiled down to now. Yeah. That's everything yeah. is boiled down to. Yeah. Watch TV. That's all it is. It's a matter of being judged well, and getting immunity. Uh, let's that's face what it. Life is. Let's face it. Trump got elected in the age of reality shows because he was a reality star. I, I don't know. That's why he got elected, but it's. I think it was that. because everybody was thinking of it as a uh, as a reality show. Oh, but, but, you know. But, but, but that it's <laughs> the sad thing is it, that that's not even reality anymore. It, being on a show is not reality. I know, I know. know there's but, cameras but, but on America doesn't that. understand that. Oh, I saw no. him on uh, on uh, The Apprentice, and he knew a lot about money. You know, I think we should elect him president. Yeah, that's like saying that this is reality. This is not reality. Not that, by the way, not that he won that election. He won the electoral college in that election, but he didn't win the votes. He was about five million right. votes off or something right. from Hillary Clinton. Right. And and thank goodness that that system's still in place. Let's let's keep that going for, you know, what? It's a stupid uh, system. Of course, it's a stupid system. In this day and age, it's a stupid system. To there me, a, to me, there the was winner, a need for the Electoral College at one point, but not now. To me, the winner of anything is who gets the most votes. Right. That that's what I just said. That's but it's the not. reality. That's the reality series we live in, and nobody gets immunity in the in the election. That's the problem. I think somebody should get immunity. Well, uh, Trump thinks he should have immunity. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yes. Okay. So he gets immunity, and then he gets an idol. He gets an yeah. immunity idol to carry yeah. with him throughout the campaign. Yeah. And and then kill your opponents. That's the one thing they don't have. Oh, except in the Squid Show, I guess. Kill your opponents. Yeah. Squid Game, yeah, you can do that. Well, you, you know, and then uh, he game. has his. Well, the problem in New York, he, uh, judging Gorin has yet to, d at least as, as the re at the recording of this program, probably be done by by the time people are watching it. It could be, yeah. Uh, he uh, he uh, he has to come up with a decision. Uh, but I don't know how it's going to come out. I think it's going to come out where he's going to nail Trump like crazy. Uh, well, there was a telling thing at the, at the end of the trial when he asked uh, the uh, prosecuting, one of the prosecuting attorneys, what, what, what impact does this have in relation to um, uh, Madoff, Madoff? He said, how can you compare this to Bernie Madoff? And as much as how much people have lost, and that's that's very telling because Madoff was was one of the the, the most uh, uh, notorious uh, nasty cases of be people being ripped off, and to com to compare that in any way is is very telling. So yeah, I, I, I don't know if you can compare Trump to Madoff, but then why would you say that? Well, you, I don't know why. It's very, it's very telling why. that he would ask that. But anyway, Angoran, uh, I don't know what he's going to do, but we had a case up before Angoran recently mm -hmm. uh, in which uh, I agreed to give the guy who had this apartment $75,000 so that he would just go away. And Are you allowed to talk about this, or do you have a gag order? Oh, sure. Order? No, I don't have a gag order. Okay, just checking. So then we, uh, we paid him. Uh, 71,800 because he still had 4,200 of our security deposit that he wasn't giving back. Mm. Okay. Which he has to by law. And so we withheld that. So then he took us back to court with Ngoran and Ngoran said, no, you got to give him the 4,200 to us. So, huh. you know, I guess I'm with Trump now about the judge. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you had to pay the extra forty two hundred? Yes. 
Oh, wow. So now we're suing him for the, uh, the, uh, uh, for the, uh, what do you call it? The, um, uh, the, the security deposit, ah. which by law, because he didn't pay it on time and because he was refusing to pay it, he actually owes us double damages, taking it to 12,000. Oh. So oh. But now we're in another court battle. But Ngoran made this decision. So in the same month that he, he kind of been doing the Trump trial, he had time out to be able to deal with my measly little $4,200. And ruled against you. And ruled against us, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, somebody the other day said that actually Ngoran had had, uh, had uh, bomb threats against him. Right. And I said, yeah, it was me. <laughs> you know. See, now just saying <laughs> this on here could get you in trouble. Yeah, well, come on. Make, Th this old sure fart you know is capable of, of, uh, of doing that? No, I wouldn't. Well, Actually, no, Ngoran, I have to say this. All things considered, I have to say Ngoran's a pretty nice guy. Very nice guy. You know, um, he has his assistant, which Trump complained about, mm -hmm. you may remember, who I think I don't like as much. I mean, she rules the roost there and can many times make be part, be the decision maker. So, mm -hmm. you know, I know why I know why Trump kind of disliked her. Oh. OK, uh, but and I don't dislike her horribly, but, you know, I understand it. Um, you better watch it. Uh, the, Mr. Trump may put this up on his uh, Truth Social account well, as uh, a vindication for what he said. Oh, yeah. By the yeah, way, folks, and it in, agreed case, with in me. case you're listening, no, I didn't phone in the bomb threat, okay? All right. But, but he still didn't like that nasty, nasty woman who worked with him. <laughs> totally nasty. Yeah, well, I mean, but you, I, I kind of have to agree with Trump about her, okay? Wow. No, That's... because his whole contention was she was just very mean and nasty and things like that. And I, I kind of, I can see where he came away with that impression, okay? Would you, would you write it in all caps? And by the way, that 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 law clerk or law law assistant or whatever it is, it's the judge's lawyer basically. Yeah, it's his law clerk. Is is running. And runs for a judgeship in the Supreme Court. So, oh, she's running. She's gonna, she's thinking of running. Oh, okay. She's well, in the process of raising funds. Okay. Please don't come to my door, because I'm oh. out forty two hundred dollars. Okay. Maybe I would have given you forty two hundred dollars for your campaign, but unfortunately, I don't have it anymore. Nasty woman. Yeah, that's my touch with Trump. My, my one hundred what what six degrees of separation. Yeah, I'm one yeah. degree separated. One degree, right. One degree away. Through Ngoran. Lucky you. Alex, Ngoran, Trump. What is that, two degrees? Y you've interviewed Donald Trump, haven't you? No. No? No. Mm. He walked by me while I was doing a show in Vegas. Oh. Uh, as the guy who was running the strat on the stratosphere, we were doing one of the first broadcasts from the top of the stratosphere, and uh, Trump was being given a uh, tour by the yeah. owner of the Stratosphere, uh, who was, I'm trying to remember the guy's name now. He was, became quite famous at the time. And uh, he, um, uh, he walked right by. And I, I wanted to get him, but he, he was going by too fast. So. Should have had a better producer. Huh? Should have had a better producer. You would have been out there tackling him. I would have tried. Well, that's what you do. You know, I, I quickly, I just tell you an old radio story. I hate old radio stories, but I'll tell you one. I worked at oh, KTIM please. in San Rafael, California. It's the first place I ever worked at a radio station. And they had a show called The Man on the Street, in which every day the owner of the station would go down to the Rexall drugstore where he had like a remote unit, and they would take his microphone with a long enough cord that went out into the street. And he would interview people as they were passing by, you know. Uh, and sometimes people, may we talk to you? You know, all those kind of things. And some people would go, go fuck yourself. You know, get away from me. I don't want to do it. He taught me a trick because I had to do the show a couple of times. He said, what you do 
is you take the cord from the microphone and you wrap it around their foot so they wow. can't get away. And that's what I learned to do in radio. My first big lesson, how to trap people into doing your man on the street broadcast. You physically lasso them into yes, being you, part of the you, show. It's quite a technique, but you can do it. You just kind of, like they the walk in front of you and then you kind of, boom, and you, you, you get them by the foot and you don't let them go till they talk to you. Maybe if you had, had told me that, I'd have been better at booking guests. Well, yeah, well, what I'm saying is I wish I had that microphone when Trump walked by that time. Yeah, you yeah. know, I could have just, and then, come, come on over here, Mr. Trump. I don't want to talk to you. Yes, you do, you know. But I didn't want to talk to Trump anyway. I didn't find him Does interesting. Does he not want to talk to? Yeah, exactly. Well. <laughs> he wants to talk to everybody. Yeah, he, who knows what he was like back then, but, you know, probably the same prick he is right now. It's just that when you get older, it's accentuated. And now that he has syphilis. Who has syphilis? <laughs> Haven't you heard this one? No. What's his name? The The guy, we'll run over, over a little bit here. Um, the guy who was Clinton's director of the campaign, what's his name? The Mouth from the South. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, the Louisiana guy. Yeah. yeah. He just did a, a video about how he is determined that Trump has syphilis because Trump put his hand up and there were some sores on his hand and he showed these sores to doctors and they said, oh my God, that's syphilis. I'm Could explain look, a I, lot. Could explain a lot. Paresis causes problems. The mental I'm going I'm to check this out as well, just like I did last week when you told it's me. It's on the, the page right after where the plane landed. Plane landed at two two and a half miles from a ski lodge. Well, actually, we're going to end this right now. But before I get rid of you physically, we're going to look it up right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, but that is, that is my old pal, the ever surly and uh, surly to bed, surly to rise. Surly. Surly. I'm. I've heard stoic, but I never stoic. heard stoic. Stoic. So stoic's better than surly. Yeah. I I take stoic. Yeah. I don't mind. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's Albert Reynoso. Thank you, Albert. Thank you, Alex. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Don't you love him? He's terrific. He's really terrific. That's, uh, that's my old producer, uh, here at, uh, Sirius XM. And I wish I had met him earlier as a producer because he was, I would say, probably in his own way, the best producer I ever had. He was just terrific. He was just incredible. But he was a professional. He was a New York professional, you know, and they know how to do uh, radio shows. Uh, everybody else who was my producer, I had to train, and I had some nice producers. I had some good producers, but he just, you know, he walked in the door and he took over, and uh, it, was, it was wonderful. But anyway, I think it is time for us to go over and check out everybody on the Zoom, of which there are only two people at the present time. Uh, let me admit them. Let me see here. There we go. Okay. Uh, Charlie Wallace is here. Hello, Charlie. And Brian Neary is here. Hello to the two of you, and thank you for calling me at this, at this late hour. Uh, uh, yeah. How how you doing there, Brian? What? I'm doing good. You, you kind of. I just got like a new stand thingy, so I'm just kind of. Yeah, but your sound is a little weird tonight. Some kind of muffled. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. You muffled. know why? Maybe because. Uh, uh, do you usually use a microphone of some sort? Yeah, the, you probably aren't using the microphone. How's that? There, is that better? that's much yeah. better. Yeah, it's too loud. That's too loud or good. Yeah, it's a hundred percent better. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, hello, mm -hmm. hello to Jeff Stein. Uh, howdy, Jeff. Hello there. Yeah, really good. So uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, anybody been doing anything interesting at all? We didn't see you mm -hmm. on the Monday show, did we, Brian? No. Why did you have some President's Day celebration you had to go to? Yes. <laughs> no. I was with Adrian. We were, uh, we were, where were we? 
We were we we're somewhere. F oh, we we're bowling. Oh, really? Is she good at bowling? With the bumpers, yeah, she's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those days. Another friend, mm -hmm. who was a female, mm -hmm. she was a bunch of the kids were there, and she said, you know, she has her nails and all this stuff, and she said, okay, let me try one time. Yeah. So she tried on my turn with no bumpers, and guess what happened? What happened? I no. almost filmed it, Charlie. Yes, I she almost filmed it, and she got a strike. You really? You know the law. The law right. averages. She got gutter ball like three times in a row after that. <laughs> really? Yeah, I should have. Man, I was just about to film it, and then I said no video. You know, and I said no, and then there it goes right down the center and strike. And I'm like, unbelievable. She never picked up a bowling ball before in her life. Wow, that's incredible. That's great. Yeah. It's terrific. It sounds wonderful. So, anyway, so you went bowling. And that's good. You're such a good. Yeah. You're such a good father. Yep, I know. How do the other kids feel? Do you dote on the other kids too, or do or you just dote on her? Uh, I'm the best father to them because I just leave them in their room. Oh, so I see. Everybody. Okay, they and have the, their own life. They don't have anything to do with you at that age. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 At this 14, early 15, age, at this 16. at this early age, Adrian probably clings to you like you know, grim death. You know. Yeah, and then I'm making a big meeting today, and she's home this week for their break. And you know, of course, I my phone rings, and it's her, and it's like, this is definitely not the time. So, yeah, yeah. But, what is it? Can I have you know soup? Can I have udon, ramen? So, yeah, yeah. Important phone calls in big meetings. But but uh, uh, t take that for what it is now, because in a few years she's going to want you to leave her off a block before the school. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> That's what I'm told. I don't know. I'm, I've never I'm been a father. Trying to brainwash her, but, huh? I'm trying to brainwash her now. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I mean, she likes the cars and that stuff, so that's uh, that's always good. So, yeah, yeah. Well, he's got a good car. My little <laughs> Ford Falcon. My kids are always embarrassed about me dropping them off. <laughs> Charlie, how old were you when you had your kids? Uh, thirty-six, thirty-eight, and forty. See, I that was too young for me. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I I was I was you know I was going to Vegas, still having fun times. So it's like I I'm I'm glad I didn't have a kid then, or you know I'm, I'm so glad also, I had a kid when, when I was older. When did you decide was... to have um, uh, Tiffany move in with you? And then uh, is it when you finally decide to give up on life? <laughs> no, I got married before that. I gave up. <laughs> ten years before that. When he decided to but you home. thought living with somebody instead would be easier than being married to them, right? Exactly. But was it? No, of course not. <laughs> it's the same thing. The only difference is you got, you got a little service going or something. Come on, we're all waiting for wedding invitations. Yeah. Tiffany and Brian. I did it once. I might. Sorry, my, but that my, is not my, happening. My third okay. wife, I married. <laughs> my third wife, I married because we were living together, but we were broke, and we figured if we got married, people would give us gifts, <laughs> and and we would tell them just give us cash. Jesus, what a good Jew you are. <laughs> well, kept the kept us alive for a couple of months, you know. So that was that was good. That marriage didn't last, uh, but <laughs> neither did the other two. And I'm wondering if I had done this marriage 30 years ago, if it would have lasted, you know? Yeah, see, and I always, and I hate to keep saying this, but... Excuse me, I have an itchy not, nose, not, folks. What? I, I listen to you all the time, and you, and you always said, you know, about meeting the right person, and... And the people I were hanging out with, I didn't. They were definitely not the right people to have a kid with when I was younger. Right. So. No, it's got to be somebody you trust. Yeah. You know. Now you knew I didn't trust people then when I was younger. Yeah. But too much. Party but party. has a has, it's paid off in a dividend, hasn't it? I mean, Adrian is a great dividend. Yes. You know. And, yeah, and, definitely. And you sound like you're enjoying every moment of being a father. Yes, exactly. However, when when the thing is in the very beginning, the father has nothing to do with the with the situation, right? You almost feel like a stranger in the house. I don't know if Charlie and Jeff were there at birth, but yeah, we were. When, that, 
When that baby comes out and the mother holds, the baby knows where to go. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you're useless. It, it's you're unbelievable. useless. It's yeah. just yep. unbelievable how how that whole thing works. I mean, from there, you know, from from being fed by the, you know, by the umbilical cord and then coming out and knowing where your food is. I yep. mean, that is like, yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah. But and the kid has absolutely no use for you. That's All right. not true. Well, well, well you, 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 you're saying it's true, Charlie, or it's not true? No, it's not true. The only thing that, that, that she could do that I couldn't do is feed them. But if they're crying, I could walk the floor with them, pat them on the back, sing to them, do you, all you that. Could do, you breath. could do that, but the baby really personally has no use for you until a few years in, you know, because up until you know, then it needs, it needs mom. You and know? if you're Jewish and a male, I can see why the kid doesn't, if it's a male kid, doesn't want to be around you. You know, three days later, you know, you snip, you know, <laughs> and he's like, dad did this to me. I, I hate him. I'm going to go to mom for the next two years. Yeah. <clears throat> but when did you really start bonding with Adrian? When she was about three, maybe four? No, 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 no. I think it was sooner than that. I, yeah. I mean, yeah. the the whole thing was, uh, I it, it it's the anticipation of her being able to drive with me in the car. That's when that's when I was just really happy. Like I wanted to go to car shows and and you know, and, and COVID hit. So then it was like, cars and coffee got really big. So cars and coffee is like perfect for her and I. You know, get up, take off, come back before the family's even up. So. Yeah. That's what I was, I was really excited to be able to have her in the car. That that was my big thing. Her yeah. her first words were trust fund, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know something what's interesting is is that uh that uh, kids uh her age um uh now what was I going to say? I can't remember now. You ever start no. saying things and then you completely kids her forget age them. Are, all the time. Kids her age are the same age. I think maybe that's what you were going to say. <laughs> like Charlie's shirt. Remember Charlie's shirt? What is shirt? It's funny that these old people are the same age as me or something. Yeah, it's strange being the same age as old people. Yes, right, right. But anyway, I mean, I, no, what I I was, was, anyway, I was go ahead. Costco. Go ahead. I was in Costco the other well, a couple of weeks ago, and I saw some guy, and I said, God, this old codger, get out of the way. And I went around the corner, and he came around the corner, and I went, son of a bitch, we went to high school together. <laughs> well, I told you the point. story about when I went to my, uh, what was it, 40th? 40th high school reunion. And I pull up, it was, it was in Petaluma, and it was going to be done on a boat. So I pull the car up to the pier, and I get out, and I can't decide re really whether to do this or not, because, you know... It's different if you go to like a ballroom somewhere and they have a little dinner or something. And then when you don't want to talk to anybody, you just get up and leave. But if you're on a boat, ain't no way you're going to be able to do that. So I go over to the boat and I'm, I'm off to the side and I'm looking to see people getting on it. And I go, I don't recognize any of these people. Did I go to school with them? These people are old. <laughs> And then I suddenly realized something. Mm. So was I. But I still didn't get on the boat. I got in the car and went home. You know. <laughs> Called a couple of friends and went, I just couldn't get on the boat. You know. So I want people to look like me. No, that's not good and either. And nobody yelled out, hey, there's Alex Bennett. <laughs> uh, no. No, they didn't. And, and no, but I'll tell you what happened. At the, at, I too. went to the one maybe... 10 years earlier because it was held somewhere where I could get away if I had to. And I go, I, I'm going around and they go, oh, uh, and it, you, you have your name on a, you know, on a, a badge. So everybody knows who you are with your, with your picture of what you look like when you were in high school. Okay. And, uh, I'm, I'm standing there and some people are coming over and saying hello. And I'm finally talking to one person and they said, so what are you doing now? Uh, Bennett, Okay, Ben, and I said, uh, uh, "Well, I, I I'm I'm in radio." Oh, really? Where do you do radio? I said in San Francisco, and then he looked at me, 
or maybe it was a she, I can't remember, but looked at they looked at me and they said, You're Alex Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> And I never, ever heard it that way. You're Alex Bennett, you know. You're not Bennett Schwarzman. So that was it. That was the one time I was recognized at a school, how high school reunion. How old were you when you came up with your stage name? Well, I, I started out as Jerry Bennett. Mm. And don't ask me why, okay, because okay. it's too embarrassing to say. Okay. Jerry Lewis. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And I was Jerry Bennett until I went to Houston, Texas. And when I went to Houston, Texas, I became James Bond. Oh. Um, uh, 008 with a license to kilt because the station was K-I-L-T. Oh, that's cute. Okay. And uh, I did my show for about two years there as James Bond and finally decided the James Bond thing was wearing thin and they were going to be doing a talk show at night, and they said, uh, I said, I, wanted, I want the talk show at night. And they said, well, no, you're doing a morning show, and blah, blah, blah. I said, well, if you don't, get, if you don't give me the nighttime show that you're going to do the talk show, um, I'm going to have to go look somewhere else. And so they said, okay. But I had to come up with a name. And I wasn't going to go. This was a good time to get rid of Jerry Bennett, okay? <laughs> And I thought for about names. What can I make my first name? Bob Bennett? No, that sounds like a gun going off. You know, uh, uh, Larry Bennett, maybe like Jerry Bennett, but the, not exactly Gary. Uh, and uh, no, nah, it doesn't work at all. And then my father had died. And uh, I remember, you know, his name was Alex. And I said, what a better tribute I could have than to call myself Alex. So from <clears throat> then on, I was Alex Bennett. So that's. That's how I got the name, you know. That's what when I chose it. In those days, you did a nom de radio, you know. It, no matter what your name was, you had to change it if you were on radio. Like um, uh, 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 Jack Bishop's real name uh, is uh, Irv Jackson. Hmm. What's wrong with Irv Jackson as a radio name? Yeah, yeah, that's a great, that's a good radio name. Right, but one day he said, I'm going to radio, I have to find a radio name. What? Herb Jackson is just fine. You know, that'd be a great radio name. But uh, Alex Bennett's a fairly um, original name. You don't see it around that much in show business until recently when some female sports person Named her, is uses the name Alex Bennett. Now, whether it's really her real name or not. And so if you go to, um, I don't know, uh, just put my name in, Alex Bennett, into, into, Google, into uh, Google. And uh, Google me under Alex Bennett. She'll come up first now. Because she had a sports show on ESPN or something. So anyway. I, I, I'm, think, I'm thinking of getting a hold of the union and say, tell her she can't use the name. Hey, does she have a sports Emmy? I don't think so. No, she. I don't think she does. You know. Yep, you're right. She came. To, she came up first. Yes, yeah, see, and it used to be I came up first. That's what happens when you get old and you used to be a big shot. You know. I think that happened to Trump too. Did it really? Yeah, he used to be a big shot. Then he became president. By the way, they say that last month he spent more money than came into his uh, his uh, campaign fund. Really? Uh, yes. Yeah, legal fees. Because yeah. of the legal fees, he's using all his all his uh, uh, funds that people send him to for the campaign. He's spending them on his legal teams. I didn't think that was legal. No, he can do anything with it he wants to. Oh, he can? Okay. Oh, yeah, he could go out and buy like 10 million wax lips if he wanted to, you know? That would be cute. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Um, Maybe we ought to do that. Send him custom-made wax yeah. lips that says, you know, Trump sucks and with the lip. Well, and, and send a bottle of, uh, oh, say, um, uh, super glue. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And that, that's the way to keep his mouth shut. But anyway... So uh, he, uh, no, he, sp he spent more money last month. He spent nine, what was it? He got $9 million in and spent 12 or something. So oh. he, by the time he runs for president, there's going to be no money to run with. 
if indeed well, he ever gets 354 million he's got to pay yep it, well, no yeah. it's more than that because yeah. with the taxes it comes to about 450 450 million yeah. and That's it gets true. to be more every day because it keeps accruing interest yeah he's got to every, every day he doesn't uh, pay it Yes, uh, Letitia James, who is the uh, uh, this, uh, the attorney general of the state of New York, who I believe prosecuted him in that particular case. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Just remember where we were, okay? There's a guy here by the name of Alan Salmon, and I don't know if he is whatever, but let me just put me on screen here, and let's see who he is. Uh, let's see what we happens. Gotta see him. Oh, huh? we got to yeah, see. Really, him. I'm going to block my. Oh, that's that's uh, yeah, that's that's we got to get rid of him. Uh, let me see here. Uh, stop video. Uh, no, that was for Jeff Stein. I don't want to stop Jeff Stein's. Uh, um, uh, Asked to start <laughs> video. Uh, 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 start the video, would you please? Uh, let me see. Where's Salmon? There he is. More. Um, uh, let's see here. How do we get rid of him? Uh, remove. Okay. There we go. We remove him and he's <laughs> gone. Okay. Anyway, see, uh, that, that was, I've seen that guy before and he was like, he had no clothes on or something. Yeah. What's he doing there? Sitting there watching the show, jerking off to it. You know, I have no idea. Uh, I, I think he's turned on to, uh, to, uh, Jeff, you know? What? And anytime he sees Jeff on the show, no, I'm sorry. Yep, yep. <laughs> anyway, I just removed him again. It wouldn't be me. I don't. I, I'm not. I don't have the classic looks like you. Yeah, I'll remove him again. Here we go. He keeps trying to get in. The next time <laughs> I won't remove him. I'll let him just sit there forever. There he is again. Oh boy. Oh. Uh, well. Probably film mine. Yeah. I, mean, I wish it were something, you know, they don't give you a, a, um, uh, an ability, if you're going to remove the guy, to remove him permanently so he can't ever, mm -hmm. you know, call you yeah. again. It just says remove, you know, and uh, I, I think we should have, they should have a thing that just says, you know, do not let this person through. So, anyway. Mm. Mm. But he was sitting there getting his video ready to go, I think. Yep. 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 Anyway. We're talking about Letitia James. Oh, Letitia James. Yeah. So what she did uh, today, uh, she announced on uh, some interview, maybe it was yesterday, that she has every intention if by the end of the 30 days or something like that, he does not come up with the money, she's going to attach his properties. Uh, and so uh, the first one she's going to attach is the big building down Wall yep. Street. It says the Trump building. And I, I, I think, she, she, I think mm -hmm. she should absolutely go after Trump Tower. That would be so humiliating to Donald yep. Trump that it would be ridiculous. you know. And if he doesn't come up with the money, she has every right to do it without having to you know, have some – he can't – like suddenly say, well, you can't do that. I won't let you do that. No, I'm sorry. He, she can do it. You know. The way a good stab in the back would be for her to grab it and change it from Trump Tower to Biden Tower. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, that would be that would be. Well, the only thing is, they can't take Trump Tower and change the name to the Empire State Building because money you know, it belongs to the it's state the of New one. York, but we already have an Empire State Building. Yeah. So uh, you know. Empire State Tower, that might be good. Yes, Jeff. Well, you're muted. You're Jeff, muted. you're muted. <clears throat> Unmute yourself, Jeff. Okay. There I'm you sorry. go. You're fine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, the thing that I was concerned about is Trump. All right, so he's bringing in $12 million or whatever. Yeah. What does he do with that money? I don't believe he's. I don't know. I think he's putting a lot of it in Florida or someplace. No, 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 no. He's taking that money and paying off lawyers. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, you know, because you can't sell enough sneakers to pay this thing off. You know? Especially when they haven't even been made yet. Yeah. And, right. uh, I, you know, here's a guy for years. What has been his big claim to fame? 
I am a billionaire. I'm a multi-billionaire, not just a billionaire, multi-billionaire. Estimated somewhere around $7 billion, okay? Don't you think if this guy had a billion dollars or even half a billion dollars, he could write a check out for this amount of money? And right? not think anything about it. Huh? And not think, well, if he only had a half a million, he could think something about half it. But if he had a billion, just say a billion, he still have yeah. money left over. It would be chump change. And he get to keep his properties. Yeah. You know. Um, so, I mean, this is, you know, this is really, uh, uh, and yet you've got all these suckers who send him money. Now, I'm sorry. The last thing I would do for a billionaire is send him money. In fact, shouldn't he be sending me some just to make me feel good, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, I, it is, it is, it goes beyond comprehension that anybody would send him a check. Hey, why do you like Donald Trump? Well, he's a billionaire, um, first of all. Yeah, well, then why are you sending him a check? Why isn't he paying for everything? Yeah. If he were a multi-billionaire, he could just pay, he could, he wouldn't even have to ask for people to donate to, to his campaign. He could yeah. just finance the whole campaign. I think he did on the first one. He he uh, paid for a lot of it. But then again, he didn't spend very much money. Why didn't he spend money? He didn't have to buy advertising. Would anybody like to explain why he didn't have to buy advertising? Because uh, all the news networks were having him on the news every day. Every minute. Free. Every minute. And they, you know what they're doing this time? Every Anything. minute. The only problem this time is, is that it's all for the worst of possible reasons, you know. Before they were just saying, did you hear what he said today? Ha, 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 isn't that terrible, blah, 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 blah. This time it's really, it's, it's ugly, it's horrible. The, now here, um, here's the thing that got me. Um, he compared himself the other day, anybody like to explain? He compared himself to a famous human being. Who did he compare himself to? Ready? Yeah. Navalny. Yeah. In this interview that he was giving, he said, I'm the American Navalny, oh, and, yeah. and Trump is the American Putin, which I don't think Putin's going to be that happy to hear. You know, I mean, isn't that a, it, it, who who makes that kind of equation? So Putin it, in this past week has said two things. One, he would rather see Biden win. And two is when Trump said that if a NATO country doesn't pay up uh, Russia, Putin can invade them and he won't have any. I would encourage them to invade him. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. He didn't say anything at all. He's smart. He's not. He's not dumb. Well, like, also, also, um, yeah. uh, the only mention of Navalny was the one thing I just said. That was the only recognition about Navalny dying. Okay, uh, and uh, he didn't. Uh, he didn't uh, say anything horrible about Putin. Was it, Navalny yeah. was not an American citizen, was he? No. No. Why would Russia. he be? No, I, I'm just, I'm going to bring up a point here. Otherwise, you'd be pretty oh, stupid don't... going to Russia and protesting right, Putin. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, so, because Putin killed him, Biden wants to, or is going to, put more sanctions that aren't doing any good against Russia. But he's going to put more. So, does that mean that Putin could come to this country and put sanctions on us if... Uh, Biden had somebody killed, you know. Um, wh why are we interfering? I mean, he's in Putin's country. He was stupid enough to go back. And I, I feel, I, I think Putin's an asshole for killing this guy. But to put sanctions on him for that, what good does that do? The sanctions aren't hurting him. Russia's got more money than they've ever had. They're getting... They have South Korea and, and, and China and everybody. They don't have them. South Korea. North Korea, I mean. No, uh, North Korea, I'm sorry, right. 
I get my south and north messed up. Uh, the, the Soviet Union is not doing well. I mean, uh, our sanctions are hurting their economy. They are hurting them. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. Don't know. Uh, uh, Maybe uh, not Putin personally, but they're hurting Russia. The, yeah, okay. uh, definitely hurting Russia, and uh, it's uh, you know it's it's uh, it's 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 it's. But why it's, are we? Why are we? Because he executed didn't execute because he murdered this. This it's guy. assumed he murdered him, but then again, who else would it be? We have only one suspect. Right, right. <laughs> you know. no, I, I'm, I, I'm agreeing that he probably did it. I'm just saying, why are we putting more sanctions on him? Why are we interfering with him that way? I don't think he it's interfering. I think it's our way of saying we're really upset that this person, whose only crime was speaking out against you, right, somehow mysteriously dies while in prison, having been imprisoned by basically you. Yeah. yeah. You know. No, I, I agree that it was wrong. But I'm, I'm I mean, saying, well, I'm glad you agree it was wrong. Well, but, you know, yeah. that's not my... Because my, if you had said it was right, I would probably have to think my, rethink my thinking about the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, there you go. No, I, my, my point is, is that if Biden... Had Trump killed, or had I don't know who killed somebody that spoke out against him? Why why would we expect Russia or some other country that was unhappy with us doing that to come out and put sanctions on us? I don't think the sanctions are justified. I, I think he, he can he can verbally in the well. You could also argue that then we should probably shouldn't have done the sanctions against him when he invaded Ukraine. Oh yeah, we should have. Well, you see, I mean, if somebody does something terrible, yeah. I mean, uh, it's not like uh, Navalny had due process or anything like that. No, At his trial, no, he, he wasn't allowed to even hear the evidence against him. No, right. Most people aren't. And if the evidence against him in court is usually a lie, anyhow, in, in Russia. They just they just grabbed a uh, a ballerina or something. Yeah, a woman who's a ballerina, an American citizen, half American half Russian, right? Okay. Dual citizenship. Du yeah. yeah, and uh, she went to Russia. I don't know to ballet or whatever. I don't know. Where yeah. else do you go if you're a ballet dancer? You want to go to Russia? That's the best ballet dancers in the world, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, she, uh, while she was there, somebody asked her, "Would you like to donate to the Ukrainian fund or something?" <laughs> and she donated to it and immediately was arrested. Uh, for being uh, causing, I don't know, treasonous action because she gave them $51. Wow. Mm. Now, can you think of that reason as being a good reason to put sanctions on oh, Russia? She's part American. Yeah, I think so. I think oh, Okay, well, then yeah. you see. Okay. But, he, but the other guy wasn't part American. So. What other guy wasn't? <laughs> oh, you mean Navalny? No, he was a yeah, Navalny, Russian yeah, citizen, and very popular in Russia. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, and but uh, uh, Putin has no faith in his ability to gain the people's trust. Okay, so therefore he has to go to extraordinary measures to keep dissent down oh. by killing I people. He, he just he, he may have had another person killed. There was a uh, Russian who defected from the army or the air force or whatever and defected to Ukraine, huh? The what? guy that defected was a general. No, or no, a... no, 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 oh. no. And he then, uh, I think he, he was uh, in the air force or something like that. He defected to Ukraine, then he went to Spain and he turns up this weekend dead. <laughs> wow. You know, the long arm of <laughs> Russia these yep. days extends all around the globe and sure. if you're not in the pleasure of vladimir putin you better watch out for yourself mm -hmm. you know it's too bad vladimir putin didn't take tucker and put him in prison for all the wrong things he did in this country well i and tomorrow night uh, phil's going to be on with me one of the things he wants to discuss is tar tucker carlson's interview <laughs> and he says you know uh, as you know uh, mm -hmm. It's important that somebody sits and asks a question and then just listens. No, Phil. I, as an interviewer is very experienced, you don't just let somebody say something that isn't true and get away with it. You know, 
you know. So, I mean, if I'm asking, uh, doing an interview with somebody, and they say something is completely wrong, I'm, yeah, of course I'm going to jump in. Tucker had a job to do, and that job was to get some answers from him. And even Putin, in an interview later on, said that was a horrible interview. Yeah. He said it was, a, and they asked him why, and he said it was a horrible interview because he didn't ask me any tough questions. He said, I was ready for tough questions. That's why I did the interview. I was ready to handle them, but he never asked them. He said he was a terrible interviewer. So, you know, if, if uh, Putin feels he's a terrible interviewer, I imagine he's a terrible interviewer. Uh, Putin should have watched an hour of Fox News, a rerun of uh, when, when, when he, Tucker Carlson was on, he would have known. Oh, he, he well, but on. he did. He did. Tucker Carlson was very popular among the power elite in Russia. And that's why he was able to get the interview with Putin. Although I'm sure if an American organization had asked, maybe Putin would, but they just don't want to because he's in such disfavor here that if they went and did an interview and didn't do it well and didn't do it proactively and ask the tough questions, uh, they would probably not be able to come back to the United States because nobody would want to talk to them. But, right. I mean, but they, they said good to Tucker because they knew him, and they said, sure, come ahead, and we'll let you do an interview with him. Well, so you, you're, you're, you know, you're, being, you're interviewing the guy, and now you have a chance to ask about Navalny, you know, ask about the uh, uh, Wall Street Journal uh, reporter who's jailed right now there. Uh, and, but no, he didn't about ask about any of those. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the problem. You know, so, uh, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm, uh, let me, let me look. Uh, you know what I do? I should get this <laughs> earlier one before I go on the air. I go to Drudge. And the reason mm -hmm. I go to Drudge is not because Drudge is any good, although he's better than he was, I guess. Uh, <laughs> um, um, but um, I think Bill won't um, stop in it. In what? In what? In Drudge. Oh, there she is. There she is. She's doing one of her dance routines now. <laughs> Hi, Adrian. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? Oh, she just locked the door. Say hi. Hi. Yeah. You want to sit down? Yeah. Yeah. Just she's she's going to take over the show. Yeah. Yeah. You go on your iPad. Okay. okay. Is it okay now? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. Hey, you, your thing is warm. Do you fart? No. Yeah. Just join in the discussion anytime you want to, Adrian. We're talking about Russia. What do you think about Russia? What do you think about Russia? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. It doesn't matter. Do you know, do you know what Russia is? Yeah. What is it? A place. A place. A okay. place. Yeah. Oh, it's also something, too. Oh. Okay. Bye. <laughs> no, no. You're the child, remember? You're the child. <laughs> we talked about stuff. Come here. Come I am here. an adult. Oh, yeah. I'm an adult here. Come on. He's a child. He's a child. Uh, I'm just short. <laughs> He's a child. <laughs> uh, she, uh, she's a character. She really is. Yeah, yeah. She's just a ham and, oh, my God, she's amazing. Yes. She showed us her teeth. Uh, by the way, tooth number 13 has a cavity in it. She has her front teeth are like in. I, I don't know. When do they when do they lose their teeth? I for, I forget now. I mean, I remember I lost mine, and I can't remember now when I lost it. Did you find it? Huh? Did you find it? What? Your teeth. My teeth. No. Uh, <laughs> she lost it. Oh, uh, the tooth fairy. She just lost. Yeah, last year. So I think about like, seven or eight is when so, they started. Uh, let me ask you the yeah. question. Now we're talking about inflation. Okay, inflation's a big deal we're talking about today. Uh, when I was a kid and I put my tooth under the pillow, did she put her teeth under the pillow? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Uh, I got, if I remember correctly now, 
a dime. Wow. My parents were extravagant. Okay. How much did you put under there? I did five. Five cents? Wow. Huh? Wow. I did five dollars, but Tiffany did twenty. What? Wow. For each now, tooth? That's inflation. For yeah. each tooth? Wow. She could have financed the Trump campaign for yeah. crying out loud with that kind of money. But like one time I totally forgot. She goes, Daddy, I've had my 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 tooth under the pillow for two weeks and they haven't come get it. I said, oh, maybe he, he's very busy. <laughs> so. uh, but but, but um, how, how, what age did she lose those teeth? Because I don't remember. What... Yeah, just like uh, she just lost those first two like last year. So oh, like I six see. and seven. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. All right, six yeah. and seven. But every I know, the kids are different. Because I remember what I hated about it was that you know the tooth would get teeth would get loose, and you yeah. wouldn't do anything to them until they fell out, you know. Uh, yeah, and then I was in Lodi one night, and the one of the ones were like wiggly, 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 and mommy tied it up with the floss, and she's gonna yank it, and then Adrian started crying and hectic house, and then they're calling me crying. I'm like, what the hell's going on? So yeah, yeah. It's no big deal. They all fall out on their own, you know. Yeah. Uh, but yep. and how long is yeah, it taking? She's gonna have to have. She'll have to have some braces or something because those front teeth are like going inward. Mine are all crooked down here. So my parents <laughs> never did it. Uh, but 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 uh, so she. I mean, but she. It was pretty painless for her, right? She. Oh yeah. Yeah. But she has a good she has a good second grade picture where she's missing a bunch of the front teeth. How how fast do they grow back in? Those grew back fast, like a couple months. Yeah, really. Quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like what they call their milk teeth. They lose. Uh, That's what they it, what sometimes they were called baby teeth. Yeah, we call well, baby them baby teeth, but they can be they usually uh, scientifically I think they call them milk teeth because of what they use you know for suckling and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. So. Mm. Anyway, but she, I remember when she had her teeth, front teeth missing. That was kind of cute. Yeah. 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 I thought you would hit her or something. I, you know, don't you, yeah. don't you, don't you love it? You lose your teeth. Then you're, then you spend the rest of your life trying to keep the, the permanent ones. By the way, it says Trump cash. This is tr Drudge. Okay. And Drudge has no love, by the way, for, for Trump, uh, as he did in the past. Uh, Trump cash crunch worsens campaign spends more than it raises 200,000 donors vanish and Don is searching around for a bond now that means that he had, might go to a, a, a bond agent who will then put up the cash mm. okay but a bond agent takes what about 10% is it 15% uh, plus collateral well no no the, the, he has to give collateral and the only collateral he right. gives is Trump Tower, Trump right. Building. Yeah. I don't even know. He has a, a couple of golf courses, you know, whatever. And then if he doesn't pay this person off, it's theirs. They own it. It's theirs. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, so. that person has to put out that money to the court, wherever they're asking. Well, giving, tr <laughs> give, given Trump's ability to pay back and to pay people. You know, he doesn't even pay construction workers for crying out loud. No. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody that would put up the bond for him. Well, that, he's going to have trouble <laughs> finding somebody. You know, and where are already, all the... he, he's already hit up banks? They say, and all the banks are turning. Well, him he, down. he p pissed off the Koch brothers. The Koch brother, the Kochs do not like him any longer. Is one of the nope. Koch brothers dead? I think so. Uh, but the Kochs don't like him any longer, and they're giving their money to Nikki Haley. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And and you know if he hadn't lost them, he could probably go to them and say, "Hey, you got the money." Of course, they got the money. You know, they're multi multi billionaires. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, he uh, he's he's. I don't think there's anybody to give him the money. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but I I I just wonder if he is sweating bullets on this one. I mean, he tries to act like, oh, you know, it's cool with me. Oh, the judge, the judge was corrupt. How do you like that? That judge right. was corrupt. Uh, yeah, all all Jewish judges are corrupt. I know, I know. But anyway, he uh, he calls them corrupt. 
Uh, he calls Letitia James corrupt. They're all corrupt and communists. I mean, it's like, it's ridiculous. You know, you should, you should learn something, Donald. You should learn to be nice to people that have the power to screw you over like this. Well, also, yes, you should be nice to them, but you should also be nice to everybody because you don't know who you're going to need later on down you know, the line. He's got 77 years of screwing people over. So. Yeah, yeah. But he doesn't, well, he doesn't know how to do business any other way. He was okay. taught by Roy Cohn, who said, you never admit you're wrong and you never pay your bills. That was the other thing Roy Cohn taught him. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's all coming home to roost. I'm just wondering, the question is, is he going to make it to the campaign? Hmm. Or is he either going to blow his brains out, hmm. or is he, going to, is he going to just not be able to go the course? He's going to have to stay at a Howard Johnson's or something. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, this, this thing, you know, he probably... Make sure the cameras aren't on and seeing I'll, them come I'll tell out. You, I, know, I know this judge, okay? I know him right. personally. But I, I know uh, I've dealt yeah. with him. I've dealt with him. Yeah. And he doesn't take crap from anybody. Good. If you if you don't give him crap and you treat him respectfully, he'll treat you respectfully. Okay? Part of this judgment may well have been because he pissed the judge off. Yeah. And that if he hadn't pissed the judge off, the judge might have gone lighter on him. Yeah. But instead, he comes in, he plays his games, he yells and screams, and he yells and screams at the judge, and he threatens his court uh, uh, assistant and 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 uh, the court lawyer, uh, and uh, he he just did everything he could to alienate this guy. And so, when it came time to write the judgment, do you think he's going to sit there and go, "Is three hundred and fifty-five million dollars too much?" Nah. Not you know? for a billionaire. You know, if he's really a billionaire, he shouldn't well, be buying uh, for our, our landlord sent three fret threatening emails to the judge. Okay? Look yeah. at how it came out. Yeah, not so I've got much. rent of $500.07 a month. And they went and they appealed it everywhere and mm -hmm. lost the appeals. But if they hadn't, this guy hadn't written those letters, maybe he wouldn't have gone that hard on them. Yeah, you might have had to pay five hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, away. something. Yeah, but all I'm saying is, is that in fact he put it in the in the, uh, what do you call it the uh, the, the, the uh, what do you call it the the termination whatever uh, of what he determination yes. yeah whatever uh, judgment. huh judgment. the judgment. judgment he put it in the judgment that this had happened that he'd sent him letters. And he said, "I'm saying this for complete transparency, uh, so you uh, and and to let you know this went on, but is not it has no absolutely no effect on my judgment." Well, I don't know. He's a human being. Wouldn't it have an effect on your judgment, you know. Okay. So that's exactly what happened here. You know, I mean, he he could have charged him less, maybe three hundred million dollars. <laughs> But he didn't. He threw the book at him, you know. And yes. uh, meanwhile, he, he's got other cases. He's going to need money for lawyers, he, which he doesn't have, okay? And uh, how's he going to defend himself in those trials? Well, he's hoping to become president, and uh, then the American people will pay for it. I mean, uh, 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 probably in the end, he's going to have to go out and go get one of those television lawyers to, you know, to defend him, Padway and Padway, or whatever the oh, Morgan and Myers. Morgan, yeah, huh? <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, well, let me see here. Anything else he he's talking about in the news? Uh, let's see here. And uh, anyway, uh, so will Phil stay over after you get that talk to interview? No, no, no. He's not going to. Oh, no. that's too bad. No. What? That's too bad? Yeah, well, it's fun watching everybody attack him and watching him defend himself. Yeah, well, it, it, it takes up too much of the air in the uh, program, you know? It sucks all the air out of the room. Uh, that's cute. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. I don't mind sitting here arguing with him for a half hour, 25 minutes or a half hour. Mm -hmm. But if he wants to stay, I mean, if he wants to stay, he can, but... Uh, 
I, I would prefer that he, if he does stay, that he lets everybody else get two cents worth in. Yeah. Yeah. I talk to him almost every day on the phone. That's not, he does the same thing on the phone. You do too. You talk to him once in a while. No, I don't. Out. You don't? Oh, lucky you. No, I don't. He never calls me. I never call oh. him. Yeah, we, we he calls me most of the time when he gets off work and then we chat. And a lot of times he'll tell his story and then I'll tell I'll start telling mine and he'll cut me off and I've learned to just continue. I just continue yeah. with the my thought. Well, I don't, well I don't he think he think he thinks the trouble is whenever I've tried to talk with him off <clears> the air, <throat> he thinks that when I'm off the air I even care about talking about politics. Mm. You know? I mean Okay, I, I hear I like talking about it. That's part he of the said show. He's not going to talk right. about Trump tomorrow. Huh? He said he's not going to talk about Trump tomorrow. Oh, that, that's very nice. Yeah. I really Open it up with a Trump question right away, Alex. Yeah, well, <laughs> sure. Sure. Well, I think that, you know, what's happening is the, the, um, the evils that he has done in the past are all coming back to roost. You know, that he, he, it's time, time's you, finally catching up with him. What? How do you see that, though? How do I see what? For these things catching up to Trump. Because he's, he's always dealt this way in business and everything else over the years. And he's gotten away with it because he skirted it. But now he can't. This and it's all come, all the, the pigeons are coming home to roost. Basically. It's the first time he's been held accountable. In his yeah. life. It, it, he's had other things like you know there were lawsuits against him for Trump ta for Trump University. He's it off. You know, but, but I mean these were all little suits here and there, and he right. could deal with them. But yeah. uh, it, right now he's living in a time where uh, part of his problem is is that he doesn't know how to keep his mouth shut. Mm -hmm. You yep. know, and he didn't know how to keep his mouth shut where E. Jean Carroll was concerned. Yep. And it cost him another what? What did they charge him the second time? $83 million. $83 million. Yeah. He only had to pay her $5 million. The okay? first time. The first yeah. time. But then after that, he went on and he made all these disparaging remarks about her. So she sued him again. They went back to court and they threw this judgment at him of $85 or $83 million. Nope. He doesn't know when to keep his mouth shut. Nope. You know, he thinks what he decided is if I'm going to spend all this time in court, I'm going to use these courtrooms to make my case to the American public of why I should be president. Yep. You know, so, I mean, uh, one of the things uh, Ngoran said in his judgment was he said sometimes when we'd ask Trump to answer a question, he'd go into a political tirade. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and he looks upon his court, uh, been, uh, going into court, as being a place to campaign. So, I mean, <clears throat> this guy is, but it's, I'm sorry, you don't get away with that. Not when you're in a court of law and you got a judge who's sitting there in judgment on you. You better yes sir, no sir, that guy, you know? I mean, uh, so anyway. Uh, it's it's gotten pretty pretty dicey, pretty dicey all the way along the line. Um, what's this? I just I just I, it's, I just see him always dodging all these things. Every time we think this is it, this is it, then something yeah. happens and he always well, slides. Wait, but what is yeah. what is this story? Let me look at this. Chat GDP. I accept. Uh, goes off the rails and starts threatening users who worry chat box is sentient. Chat, chat, uh, oh, I, I, it was different the way he wrote up what the, what the headline was. He said it was AI started railing against people and threatening them. <laughs> that would be horrible if you wrote something into chat GDP and it wrote back and threatened you. you know, so. <laughs> Anyway, but uh, yeah, there's nothing else in there. Anybody see any good movies lately? No. No. I'm still watching 90 Day Fiance. 90 Day Fiance. That's in his own house. 
Oh, isn't that the one where what what what, what is the plot? Yeah, they they go like on vacation and then they come back to the U.S. They go on vacation, they meet that person again, and hang out, and they come back, and then they give them a K one visa, so they have ninety days to get married. So it's on season ten, and I started watching a little bit of that. And my friend, these yeah, so some do friends they, said, "Oh, they... you got you got to watch from the first episode. You got to watch from season one." So I've been going through all the seasons. And what I'm what, season where, what channel three. is that on? Uh, it's on Max. It's, all on, the on, it's Max. on Max. Have you seen the thing on Max with people showing their penises? No. Not oh, yet. Oh, I forget the name of the thing, but it's like uh, they they have a whole bunch of people and they, uh, they you don't see their faces, or sometimes you. Uh, oh yeah, you see their first thing they show you is they show the part of their body that's their penis, and then. The woman has to start eliminating them, and then they show you uh, his face. So it's and like the dating game, and all she. It's a dating is... game, but you're dating penises, yeah, and vaginas. Mm -hmm. There is a, there is a female component on this thing, wow. to vaginas as well. How do you sign well. up for that? Huh? <laughs> Charlie, how do you sign up? For and that? that's on Max. That's on Max. Yeah. So wow. thirty day, fifty thirty. What is it? Thirty day fiance. Ninety day fiance. Ninety, 90 day fiance. Yeah, I, I want to watch the bear though. I want to watch the bear. I saw some of the award stuff, and now I see sort of what I'll it is. I'll tell you, as I, I as I was saying earlier to to uh, Albert, uh, I uh, we weren't we watched one episode of the bear, and we went, eh, you know, it didn't grab us. Mm -hmm. So Marjorie, mm -hmm. every time I'd say we should watch the bear, go back and watch more of the bear, she goes, no, no, I watched it, I didn't like it, you know. Well, you know, everybody's saying it's a great show, and then all of a sudden it starts winning all these awards, and I'm going, you know, we must. There's something we didn't see. We should, we owe it should owe it more time. Nah, I don't want to do it. Finally, after nudging her, I prod her into doing it. We watched the second episode, and I said, "You want to watch a third? She says, "Well, I'm not sold on it yet, but yeah, let's." And we watch another one. I say, "You want to watch another one?" Well, I don't know if I like it or not, but yeah, okay, let's watch another. By the end of the series, she went, that was terrific. <laughs> How many seasons are there? Oh, yeah, the, but she the, missed all the tennis tournaments. The two, yeah. two seasons? Two seasons. Two, okay, yeah, two I seasons. Watch. Yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, and, it's, uh, it, it, and they're short they're episodes. They're like a half hour each. So it's very fast to watch. You could watch it all in an afternoon, you know. Rather than have to talk to Tiffany, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> I was watch. So I watch a couple. I listen to a couple podcasts when I go up to Lodi. Yeah. And you know, a couple of comedians that are now. So like uh, Bert Kresher, and um, uh, and then there's a couple other guys. So I listen to his, and one of the he has like two comics on. It's called What's Burning, and he's actually he actually cooks with these. He'll cook while he has it, two other comedians there, and they all chit chat and they're make, making a bunch of jokes. But it was funny because there's one uh, one Mexican uh, um, uh, comedian, and right off the bat they start talking about uh, his tour, and he mentioned Larry Bubbles Brown. He's oh, really? Right. He's touring with him. He goes, "Oh, you know the guy who always says er, you know, while he's in his act." And I, I was thinking, that's is that Bubbles? And then he's all. What's that guy's name again? I said, oh, Larry, Larry Bubbles Brown, yeah. So he's he's uh, he uh, he opens for one of these guys, I guess. What uh, uh, he opens a lot for a for a, a, a Spanish. Yes, uh, that's the comedian. guy. Comedian, yeah. yeah, yeah, that guy's hilarious, yeah. And his he audience, did. his audiences love Bubbles. Yeah, that's what that's what <laughs> yeah. he was saying. He says that Bubbles is killing with these guys. Yeah, and I was laughing, just going, oh my god, it's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah that, that's the guy. He mentioned him on uh, on the Burt Pressure's uh, uh, cooking show thingy. Well, next time I talk with Bubbles, I'll I'll get the guy's name. I I I, I but yeah. the, that's a guy he he always opens for him. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And those comedians are doing they're doing their they're filming their hour long spe their things, but then they're taking these clips and putting them on reels on like Instagram and stuff. And he's on mine. He. That guy pops up all the time, the Spanish comedian. Yeah, well, He's really cool. Well, tell me the name the next time you see it. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, that's it. The theme's running and everything like that. Mm. Oh, but it's been a nice night tonight. Just yeah, a fun, nice fun little time we're having here. Charlie Wallace, thank you so much for being here. What does your T-shirt say? Oh, it's just Bay Islands from my, my cruise to uh, 
behind doors. Okay, that's not fun. Uh, Brian Neary, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank Adrian for joining us for a cameo. Uh, thanks to Jeff Stein. Good having you here, Jeff and Alan. You too. Everybody give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. I have to get over my microphone here. There we go. Wait a minute. What is that? What? How did that show up? Why did that? I didn't want that to show up. What I wanted to show up well, she's on next. That's true, uh, but where is uh, where is the uh, where's the uh, um, hmm? Where's my? There we go. That's what I wanted. Why did why did that come up? I have no idea. Anyway, uh, by the way, Amy Manuel is next with the intersection, and she'll be here uh, right after we're through. So stay where you are, folks. Stay where you are, and we'll. Uh, uh, we'll have her on in a moment. In the meantime, I will see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.